We are taking a look at the Minis Forum and the Cake series of mini PCs which feature Nvidia GeForce graphics cards in them. We will be unboxing, running some system and gaming benchmarks, then testing some games and emulators performance. The box opens to reveal the Nook X itself which we will show in more detail shortly. There's also a stand to keep the Nook X upright for minimal desktop space usage. Underneath is a user guide which is in multiple languages including English, German and Chinese. There is a power brick and cable. We will include the correct adapter for your country. There is a HDMI cable for connecting the Nook X to your TV or monitor. And last but not least is a packet with two screws which are used to secure the stand to the Nook X. When on the stand the Nook X measures 10.2 by 15.4 by 3.1 inches and weighs 2.4 kilos. On the front from top to bottom are the power button and fan mode which switches between normal and gaming fan speed. There are two USB 3.2 ports, a SD card slot, a 3.5mm combo jack and one more USB 3.2 port. On the back is a Thunderbolt USB Type-C port which you can use to connect multiple monitors via a hub for example. This is followed by a single HDMI port and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. The Nook X is available in two models. The first as an Intel i5 11400H processor that has 6 cores and 12 threads running up to 4.5 GHz. It features a GeForce RTX 3060 laptop GPU and 6 gigs of DDR6 RAM. The second model is the higher performance Intel i7 which has 8 cores and 16 threads running up to 4.6 GHz. It features the GeForce RTX 3070 laptop GPU this time with 8 gigs of DDR6 RAM. Both models support up to 64 gigs of DDR4 RAM and up to 2 terabytes of M.2 NVMe SSD with a second NVMe PCIe slot for storage. For connectivity there is Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth in addition to the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. The Nook X i5 has a power peak usage of 163.6 watts. The i7 model is a little higher with 181.2 watts. We left the i7 model running 3D Mark Benchmark and measured a highest temperature of 64 degrees and fan noise of 51 decibels. We start the system benchmarks with Passmark. Passmark pushes the CPU, GPU, RAM and storage to the maximum in the series of tests. For the Nook X i5 model we get 6889 and for the Nook X i7 model we get 7551. PC Mark is a series of more natural tests covering day to day tasks from web browsing to image processing. The scores are a little closer here with 6420 on the i5 and 6660 on the i7. Cinebench tests the CPU to see its performance with either single or multi-core tests. On the multi-core test we got scores of 9417 and 11022 on the i7 model. 3D Mark tests the CPU and GPU to see how well they work together in video processing tasks. On the Time Spy benchmark we got scores of 8394 and 10218. On Firestrike we got 18,339 and 21,298 for the i5 and i7 models. And for the Night Raid benchmark we got 46,453 and 55,105. For the gaming benchmarks we are running at a common resolution of 800p so that we can compare other Windows devices including handhelds. We are also running at 4K on the highest default graphics settings so we can see what the Nook X are capable of at both ends of the performance scale. For Forza Horizon 5 at 800p on the lowest graphics settings we got an average FPS of 150 and 165 respectively. At 4K on the default extreme graphics settings we got impressive scores of 24 and 46 frames per second. The Shadow of the Tomb Raider game is getting on a bit now but it still challenges many gaming PCs with its highly demanding graphics. 
at 800p on the lowest graphics settings we get 142 on the i5 and 156 frames per second on the i7. At 4K on the highest graphic settings we get an average of 39 and 87 on the i5 and i7 models respectively. For Cyberpunk we are running at 800p on the lowest graphic settings. On the i5 model we get around 71 frames per second average and the i7 model gets a great 123 frames per second average. Moving on to 4K with ray tracing ultra graphics settings, we get a very impressive 16 and 29 frames per second averages for the i5 and i7 models. We finish our games benchmarks with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. At 800p on the minimal graphics settings with no upscaling, we get 167 frames per second on the i5 and 188 on the i7. On the 4K extreme graphics settings, we got impressive scores of 33 on i5 and 48 on the i7 model. Let's take a quick look at the benchmark results and compare the i5 and i7 models together. Naturally, the i7 model has the higher performance with up to 10% difference on system benchmarks. Where we start to see the increases is on 3D Mark with between 15-20% to difference in performance. And our gaming performance results for the i5 and i7 are next. While running at 800p with the lowest graphics settings, we see performance differences around the 10% area excluding Cyberpunk. There's not a lot of difference here as it's low end work for both models. However, when we change the resolution to 4K with the maximum graphics settings, we can see where the strength is in the i7 with the 3070 graphics. Across the tests we see performance differences ranging between 37 and 76% which is amazing. The i7 with 3070 graphics is definitely the model to go for. With an average 50% performance difference to the i5 model it's a no brainer. For the gameplay performance we will be trying these on the i7 model with the 3070 graphics. You can run Doom Eternal very easily at 4K on the highest Ultra Nightmare graphics settings although this is with ray tracing graphics switched off. If you did want to enable ray tracing then you need to drop to 1440p resolution to get a solid 60 frames per second. If you want to play Cyberpunk at 4K then we would recommend the default medium graphic settings which keeps the frame rate above 60 FPS including busier scenes. Dropping to 1440p gets you up to the default high graphic settings. Dropping down to 1080p doesn't make much of a difference at high settings, however you can increase a few individual settings but not everything up to ultra quality. For Overwatch 2 you can enjoy the game at 4K on the default epic graphic settings. You may see some very minor dips below 60 now and again but it's not noticeable without showing the frame rate. If it does bother you then drop down to ultra. We found the best settings across all of the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer game modes to be 1440p resolution with the ultra graphic settings. This will get you around 60 to 70 FPS in the larger maps and a bit higher on the small maps. If you do want a higher frame rate then you can drop to balance settings or change to 1080p resolution. For Forza Horizon 5 we are running at 4K resolution with the default high graphic settings for a solid 60fps and no issues. You could go up to ultra but it hovers around the 60fps area so it may have drops below that in busier scenes. We won't cover many consoles in our emulator tests as you can throw just about everything up to the PS2 area and both the Nook X i5 and i7 will not break a sweat. With many of the emulators you can increase rendering resolutions, upscale to higher quality or add filters to improve the visuals. Providing the game is compatible with the Xenia emulator then generally they work pretty well. Sonic Transformed and Project Gotham Racing 2 both speed along at 30fps. Halo 3 was mostly at 30fps with some dips below, mainly when it was loaded in new parts of the map. Everything that is compatible on the RPCS3 emulator works great. You may see some minor shady caching lags now and again, but definitely nothing that will spoil playing the game. Wipeout HD runs at a full 60 frames per second, as does Escape 3. And yes, I'm still rubbish at the game. 
We tried a couple of first party games on Yuzu and they were working, or at least enough to be playable. Here we are on Cruising Blast at a solid 60 with some barely noticeable dips below. First party games are mixed but generally we get in the higher frame rates for games. The Nook X series are great gaming mini PCs if space is an important factor. Being far smaller than a traditional gaming PC it does take up very little space and could even be stored out of sight, say behind a monitor if you wish to. To put it in comparison, a 30 series desktop GPU is thicker than the width of the actual Nook X case. While the performance is not quite that of a fully specced gaming desktop, the processors and in particular the mobile GPUs remain very competitive. This is especially the case when considering power usage with a peak of 181 watts compared to over double that on a desktop PC for similar specifications. We see some great gaming speeds from both the i5 and i7 models, although the i7 model will always be the best out of the two. With an average 50% increase in performance, the Nook X i7 with 3070 is an excellent choice if you are looking for a gaming mini PC. You can learn more about both models and order yours today at droix.co.uk and droix.net for international orders. Use the code NUCX5OFF on the checkout for a discount. That wraps up our Nook X i5 and i7 review. We hope you have found it useful. Keep up to date with our latest videos by subscribing. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you back in the next video.